with all of us. It was the first tragedy for our extended family. We had had, you know, deaths of, of elder, you know, members of the family before, but we had never had anything like this happen. Welcome to Waking Up with Rabbi Josh, a podcast built around conversations with people in our community who have found enlightenment in their life. While these events may not seem life-changing, the conversation will reveal how these moments shaped the way my guests see the world. The informal conversation and insights from Jewish tradition may change your life as well. And if not, it's just 18 minutes with me. So, l'chaim, to life. Today, we welcome Mitch Mondry, the president of M Group, a real estate investment firm here in Birmingham, Michigan. It is an amazing thing to spend this time with you, Mitch. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Josh. I'm glad to be here. I am excited to have you join me to talk about moments in your life. I've had the opportunity to know you as a father of incredible members of our youth group community and Temple Israel as a husband, as a son, a friend. Uh, I know you as a businessman with lots of success in our community, but I know you have a story to share today that really changed the way you see the world. So I'm excited to hear uh, what you can offer. Happy to uh, share it with you. Um, so you asked what, the, uh, what was maybe a moment of enlightenment uh, in my life. And it's uh, one that I can never forget, uh, on October 16th, 2003, uh, to be specific, because that was the day that my sister-in-law, Leah Nickerman Mondry, was killed in a tragic car crash uh, in Arizona. Uh, she was with her family, my brother Andy, and um, her three young children that were seven, four, and one, at the time. She was also traveling with her mother and father because they were taking a family vacation to go to Arizona. And um, her mother was driving the car. Leah was in the passenger seat. Uh, her mother lost control of the car. The car rolled. Uh, Leah was thrown from the car and killed um, on impact. At the time, she was 39 years old, and my brother Andy was 38 years old. So that was an experience and a moment that um, you know changed the lives of all the members of of our families, of all all our brothers, my parents, uh, and my family. First of all, let me just say, I, I'm sorry, although I, I've known the story for many years, hearing it again today uh, reminds me just how tragically sad moments like this are for you and your family and, and for others who've experienced that. Um, we all deal with death and dying often in lives, and we see death around us, but this must have been even more challenging for you because of how sudden it was and how big a tragedy this was. Uh, what did that feel like to you? Um, it, it, uh, it shook the ground um, underneath all of us. It was the first tragedy for our extended family. We had had, you know, deaths of, of elder, you know, members of the family before, but we had never had anything like this happen. And uh, me and my brothers and my parents, you know, have always been very close. And so this was one of those things that was uh, truly devastating. I mean, really hard to, hard to even fathom, um, hard to accept. And uh, it caused all of our family to um, come together even stronger, even even tighter than we had been in the past. And I'm assuming that the impact of that event even many years ago still has an effect in the way you live your life today. So my question for you is, how did that moment 
change you for the short term and for the long term? Um, well, in the short term, everything was about being supportive and loving for Andy and his children. And so in the short term, um, we kind of let everything else go and we spent, you know, as much time as we could just supporting them through this, uh, through the grieving period and then through the living period that, you know, takes place afterwards and, and how, how, trying to help them readjust to living without their, you know, mother and uh, wife. Um, but in the long term, it definitely had an impact on me because while I've always tried to live in the present um, and be very conscious and aware and grateful of everything, that sort of made me triple down, if you will. Um, I changed how I think about a lot of things. Um, I became much more uh, forgiving of other people. You know, I used to, I used to uh, be a very type A personality and um, I was demanding on myself and demanding on others around me. And um, that changed. I, I became less demanding and more forgiving of people, especially, you know, people that I love and care about. It's interesting. You, you talk about forgiveness and, and Judaism definitely teaches us that uh, it, it, a reaction to death is to really be there for the living, for the people who are around us, as I think you, you said, both short term and long term, you were able to do. But I'm also hearing you, I think, talk about less judgment of other people, right? That, that we, we tend to look around our world and say, you know, why aren't people behaving in a particular way? Why aren't people doing what I need them to do? Uh, I, do you find yourself less judgmental because of the incident? Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's one of the big changes that came from this is um, I became less judgmental of myself, you know, less, um, less demanding and less judgmental of myself and when I didn't follow through or, you know, come through with a success on something but even more so less judgmental of other people. I was, you know, as a father and a husband, I was um, always expecting a lot out of my children and wanted the best for my children and my wife. And this changed that and I kind of let go of a lot of that. And I, I decided that that wasn't the right way to live and it wasn't important. It was more, what was more important to me after this tragedy was um, just, being with people, enjoying, enjoying them, loving them. And, you know, if things didn't always go the way I wanted or expected, that was fine. So for me, I had the opportunity in this podcast to interview people who have all sorts of stories uh, from all walks of life, from all uh, areas of our community. And one of the questions that I keep hearing as I talk to people about their stories is this idea of whether or not that waking up moment came immediately after the event or as a wave over time. I'm interested in hearing from you, has that process been something that just happened or is it something that you are working on even now? Uh, it, def it did not happen immediately. It was a wave that um, started at some point after the tragedy um, when I sort of I kind of reassessed everything, you know, I, I re-examined everything in uh, my life. And um, one of the things was to, to start being, you know, less judgmental, less demanding uh, myself and others. So it, it happened over time. It's still something I think about, um, you know, sort of on a regular basis. Uh, but that's when it started. And it was because, um, as I said, even though I've always been very grateful about everything I have in life and my, in my life, this 
made me become more so. I, I became much more grateful for all the wonderful things and people in my life and decided that I needed to enjoy that much more because as we all know, uh, we never know when the last day is going to come. And so I decided that every single day I want to be there and caring and loving and enjoy every day and not get so hung up on a lot of the things I used to think and care about, like the future. I used to spend a lot of time planning and caring, uh, strategizing for the future. And while I still try to, I do, a, I do less of that. And I'm much more about what's happening today right here in front of me. It's interesting you say that because I'm, I'm spending some time right now working on my own personal journey. And part of that is uh, reading and studying about this idea of positive psychology, the, the art of being happy. And there, some of the research that's out there talks exactly about that, about we human beings are the only people who think about the future. So if we can get rid of that anxiety about the future and come into this here and now, it really does make a difference. But you actually right this minute have that in front of you in a way that I'm gonna share with our, our viewers and our listeners, you just became a grandfather. So you have an opportunity to teach this from the very first moment of a new baby's life. How, how has that birth, the, the moment you became a grandfather, watching your kids experience that added to this journey that you're on? Well, it's pretty amazing. It's the first grandchild we've had. Uh, he, Jesse Mondry Blank was born just six weeks ago. And it's interesting because he was born during this time of the, of the pandemic and the quarantine. So um, in a way it's been fortunate because uh, we've been spending time with him every single day. And um, it's been incredibly fun and loving to watch um, my, our daughter and our son-in-law, Adam, uh, become parents and you know, they're learning from scratch, how to become parents. And we get to be a part of that and watch it and just enjoy it. So it's literally enjoying every single minute that we're with him. You know, this morning he's here in our home right now in Charlevoix. And I went and picked him up at 7 a.m. and took him out of his crib and brought him downstairs and just sat with him for, you know, 45 minutes while he looked up at the sky and went to sleep. Yeah, the absence of extra noise in the world in this pandemic does open up the opportunity to, to really focus on the here and now of every moment. Uh, so right. I, I'm interested, as you, you talked about being a grandparent and watching your child become uh, a grandfather, or you're watching your child become a parent, which is better, being a grandpa or being a dad? Well, you know the cliche is that it's better being a grandparent and that that's the only reason that we had children in the first place, right? Right. Um, I don't know if that's true. I'm getting, I'm saying I'm getting equal joy out of um, being with and loving Jesse and being with and loving Lauren and Adam as they are raising Jesse. I mean, I, I love just sitting and watching them feed him or talk to him or put him, you know, rock him to sleep. Um, so I really am getting a lot of fun out of both being a parent of a new parent and being a grandparent myself. That was a perfectly politically correct answer. <laughs> so you, yeah. obviously your sister-in-law's death has affected you in ways maybe even that you haven't realized yet. And now you have this opportunity, you've lived your life, your, your kids have seen you, Diane has seen you change your attitudes. Uh, is that enough to, to really make it real for your kids and your next generation? Is you modeling that behavior, that attitude enough? Or are you now doing, are, are you, 
explicitly trying to teach that to Lauren and Adam and to Jesse as, as he comes into the world? I'm doing a lot less teaching than I used to and a lot more just being and modeling. Um, one of the things that I used to do too much was teach my children when they were younger. I was, you know, I was obsessed with teaching them everything I could possibly teach them. And, um, and I tried to model it, but I did a lot more talking back then. <laughs> and now I do a lot less of trying to teach and just be how I want to be. And hopefully they will see that and they will model that if it fits for them and if it, you know, if it resonates with them. Um, so if I was 20 years, 20 years ago, I'd probably be trying to teach a lot more than I am today. So it sounds like you're doing a lot of listening, watching, experiencing life, as opposed to trying to put your will out there onto other people. And by maybe modeling, instead of being that teacher, you actually are a better instructor of life. I don't know if I'm a better instructor, but I feel a lot better. I feel a lot better not trying to uh, impose my will on other people. Uh, I feel a lot better not um, judging people. Uh, a lot of the things that I used to uh, pay attention to and care about and, you know, and try and make right, I don't even care anymore. I, I just let them, I let them happen as they happen. I let, I let disappointments, you know, sort of roll off my back, whereas before, I would focus on the disappointment and try and fix it, you know, or try and change it for the future. I do a lot less of that now. And because of it, I'm probably a lot easier to be around. Um, it's my, so mom, my, wife would, my wife and kids probably wouldn't necessarily agree with that, but I think I'm a lot easier to be around now than I was, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you saying that because I think that we – as we evolve through these waking up moments, we really do become different kinds of people. And, and quite frankly, I think we, we are the people we need to be in the moment. And this sounds like to me, this is the person you want to be now and need to be for the sake of the next generation. Right, that's how I feel. I, I, I'm, I feel like this is just a better, a better way to live, you know, a better way a better way to be as a father, you know, as a husband, as a friend, uh, as a, as a, an employer, all of it. I try and, I try and have that in all areas of my life now. And it just, like I said, it feels right. It feels, it feels good. So bringing it full circle, this tragic moment when your sister-in-law died with family members and you were there to support them, it has not only changed the way you see the world, but the way you experience the world and live in this world. And I, for me, that is the gift that you have shared with all of us today. So one of the things that I like to do as we end these conversations is ask you something completely off topic, just to have a little fun here. I didn't prepare you for this, but please share with all of us what you are reading right now what are you reading today what what book article makes has made a difference for you right now i'm reading a fascinating book by bill bryson called the body it is a deep dive into how the human body works and the miracles of human body and life and how he, he takes everything uh, by its, your systems, you know, your respiratory system, your skeletal system, the brain, et cetera. And he gives incredible amount of history on how we discover things about the body and how the body works and what an absolute miracle it is. And I'm so fascinated by this. I've already shared, I've already sent this to three friends uh, because I want them to be able to enjoy it as much as I am. 
See, I knew I liked you. Bill Bryson's A Brief History of Nearly Everything is one of my favorite go-to books of my entire Absolutely. lifetime. This is now, now on my reading list, The Body uh, you will, by Bill Bryson. You will love it. It's as good as A Short History of Everything. Well, I am so grateful for you today as my friend, as my teacher, as uh, a, a, an important person in my life. So thank you. Thank you for being willing to share your story, a story about your family, and maybe a little insight that will wake all of us up to life. Uh, I appreciate Mitch Mondry being on the show today, and I'm excited for all of you to continue listening. Join us in future episodes of Waking Up to Life, 18 Minutes with Rabbi Josh.